Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our, well, <laughs> I was going to say our Florida Panthers franchise mode, but that's not what this is. This is a character study, a, a case study, if you will, of Almond, Ezra Almond. You know, uh, I, <laughs> I was going to make a joke there that I don't want YouTube to strike me for, but uh, the point is, is we just, we need to break it down. Does he make our Hall of Fame? And we let in a goal. That was frustrating to say the least. Um, but does he make our Hall of Fame? Uh, obviously, he's been a part of, I believe, three Stanley Cups. Uh, he's won a Calder Trophy. Uh, he's, a, he's a fairly high point producer, producing 90 points multiple times throughout his career. Uh, and he's also um, silently came, came into his own over this past year. Uh, okay, well, I guess he's not going to be on the ice for this. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, but Almond came into his he came into his own this past year. Uh, he really was able to hold down that and he, uh, hold down that left wing spot, and he looked really good alongside Raquel and alongside uh, alongside Barkov. And it, it kind of makes me sad, honestly, because I think that if this franchise mode went for a few more years, we could really see what Ezra Almond is all about, and he could potentially end up earning himself a letter. However, we can't base our voting off of projections and what ifs. We have to look at the cold hard facts, which are ultimately that he didn't ever really live up to anything more than in a good winger on a great team. Always was, you know, the second best player on his line for when he played with Barney. And he ended up earning himself a role, yes, but at what cost? Uh, aside from the Calder Trophy and the Stanley Cups, he didn't win many individual awards. But he definitely won over the hearts of fans, as he was a very clutch player for us throughout the uh, throughout our time here. Beautiful little play there. Um, but he, he was clutch. He was a lot of fun to be able to have on the team. And he's someone that we actually got from these Calgary Flames, if you remember. The same offseason that we acquired, uh, or not offseason, but trade deadline that we acquired Bryce and Barney. We were able to acquire Ezra Almond, who was a high top six, and actually grew into, I, I'm not sure if it's medium elite or high elite, but point is he was also someone and this is something that I don't know how much you all take this into account but uh, this is a big thing to me he was a team guy he took a contract of eight years at three point I believe it was 3.85 or 3.25 something along those lines uh, he the point is he accepted a major pay cut to be able to stay with this team long term and you know it, it's hard to be able to say he doesn't deserve it because while he doesn't have the individual awards, like I said, he he's just so darn likable. <laughs> he always produced, never seemed to be upset about ice time, always, uh, always, pro uh, how do I put this? He always was the guy that I could look at and be like, yeah, if I put him on the third line, I know that he won't be upset. Oh, I can, I can just slide him down a line. That's all right. And he worked so well. He was a very big, very big glue guy, if you will. He was a guy that you could put on any line, and no one's going to be, oh, he's he's shooting too much. I don't get to shoot now. He was always the, well, we got him. Good for us, you know. He was he was a good line mate, a good team player that I was very thankful to be able to have on the roster. Um, but the cons against him, once again, sorry, uh, getting a little bit off track here. Uh, the cons, obviously, are that he didn't win much. He was never the best player on his team, let alone or on his line, let alone his team. But he's always been a team guy, always a very likable guy, which I think may help him in this. Um, <laughs> I, I used to think of him as just the nut. I thought that was kind of funny, but at the same time, I was also worried that YouTube was going to say something about that. Um, but, you know... So he's clearly always been a, a player that we can rely on to put up a good amount of points when we need it. And overall, overall, he's, he's the definition of reliability. He is 90 points and a decent efficiency. He is, you know, he is put him with, you know, Raquel and he puts up over 100 points. Put him with Huberto, he puts up over 100 points. But on the downside of that, you put him with Vetrano and Heinen, and he puts up 60. Which may sound really good, but 
the point or may sound really good for those guys, but obviously for Ezra Almond, it's not. So, you know, it, I think it really comes down to in this one, his likability versus the cold facts. Does he deserve it? Mm, that's up for debate. My personal opinion, probably not. Probably someone that, you know, obviously with a couple more years could have made a very strong case for himself to do so and to have earned it. But unfortunately, he didn't get the chance to do that. Either way, guys, I really appreciate you all listening. Just let me know, you know, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that we should let him in off his likability? Or do we focus on results being how this Hall of Fame is decided? Thank you all so much for watching. Leave your vote down in the comments. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that fun YouTube stuff. And I will see you all in the next one when we discuss our next player. See you all then.